Hi there. Welcome to my physics class. In this lesson, we are going to look at a topic in uh, Form 4, floating and sinking. Specifically, we are going to look at Archimedes' principle. The objectives for our lesson today are two. One of them, we are going to state Archimedes' principle. And number two, we are going to show that when a body is partially or totally immersed in a fluid, it experiences an upward force equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. And that is uh, actually Archimedes' principle. So let's go straight on to the statement. Now Archimedes' principle states that whenever a body is partially or totally immersed in a fluid, it experiences an upward force which is always equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. Now, so that we can show that this is true, mathematically, we are going to consider a metallic block suspended in a liquid of density rho, a depth of H1 meter below the surface. Now, that's going to be the depth of the, and this is shown in the diagram on the other end <clears throat> so we have the the block here it is and the block is completely immersed in this uh, liquid whose density is rho so we can see the top the top face the upper face of the block is H1 meter below the surface of the liquid. The lower face is H2 meter below the surface. And we can see the cross-sectional area of the block is A and uh, the height of the block is H here. Now, we need to work out the pressure experienced at this point. It's good to note that that pressure will be due to two things. One, the liquid column above that surface, and also the air column, the atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure will have an effect here, and the liquid pressure the pressure due to the liquid column above that surface will also be exerted here. So we, maybe we can start there. We say that uh, pressure, pressure on upper face, the upper face of the block will be equal to, now the pressure due to the liquid column is going to be obtained from the formula that is h rho g and therefore we are going to have uh, atmospheric pressure let's just use atm for the atmospheric pressure plus h1 rho g that is the pressure on the upper surface here again due to the atmosphere uh, the atmosphere and also due to the liquid column. We'll, we also need to get the, the pressure on the bottom face or on the lower face. And again, we can get that pressure on the lower face. We are now at a greater depth, and this is going to be just like in the other case, 
going to be atmospheric pressure plus the pressure due to the liquid column. And that's going to be atmospheric pressure plus this time height 2 times density times pool of gravity. The next thing we need to determine is the force. The force that will be experienced at this point because of that pressure. The pressure exerted create a force. And that, uh, so we can say the force on the upper face. We say force on uh, upper face is going to be pressure multiplied by area. It's pressure times area. But we know the pressure. The pressure on the upper face. So that force is going to be uh, force on the upper face. Maybe you can call it force U on the upper face. And this is going to be the pressure which we have here. That's ATM plus H1 rho G multiplied by area. Uh, maybe we can um, multiply out so that we get uh, A ATM plus A H1 rho G. That is the force due to that pressure that we are exerting on the upper face of our block. And then let's now get the force on the lower face because the resultant upward force will be the difference between the two forces. The greater force subtract the lesser force. And so Let's get the force on the bottom face. This is on the upper. And now on the bottom face, and we're also going to say it's pressure times area. And the pressure at the bottom is atmospheric plus H2 rho G. Again, multiplied by area. The area is equal. That's why we have used A. Again, we can remove the brackets so that we have A dot ATM plus AH2 rho G. Let's, go, let's get the resultant upward force. Resultant upward force, the F resultant is going to be FB minus FA, FFFU, and uh, when we subtract these two, you realize that this, this and this will cancel out. This part and this part will cancel out. Maybe you can write it down. We get A dot ATM plus H2 rho G minus A dot ATM uh, plus H1 rho G. The result here will be H2 A, yeah, A, AH2. Minus um, A H one rho G. You realize therefore that uh, there is something common here. We can get uh, A H two minus H1 into rho uh, A, A rho G 
but from this result we there's something we we, we know this one h2 minus h1 h2 minus h1 actually leaves us with the height of our metallic block so we can write that this is uh, H A rho G. That's the resultant upward force. The resultant upward force because the force at the bottom is going to be greater because pressure increases with depth. So the pressure experienced at the bottom is higher than the pressure the top and therefore the force. So what we get here looks like something we are familiar with. Area, cross-sectional area times height actually gives us the volume of the block. And you see once the volume is in, the, uh, once the block is in the fluid, it displaces its own volume. So this is actually volume of the block which is equal to the volume of liquid displaced times the density of the liquid times the pull of gravity. So the resultant upward force, which we call the upthrust, upthrust, the resultant upward force, which is the upthrust, is actually equal to volume of liquid displaced times density of the liquid times the acceleration due to gravity which actually gives us volume times density times pull of gravity which is actually mass times pull of gravity but this is the mass of the fluid displaced in this case it's the mass of the liquid in which the block is immersed. So upthrust, therefore, is equal to the weight of fluid displaced. And that was our objective number two. We needed to show that the resultant upward force, which we call the upthrust, is always equal to the weight of the fluid displaced for a body that is partially or totally immersed in a fluid. Uh, we are going to stop here for now. Join me next time as we work out questions on the application of the law of flotation and Archimedes principle. Therefore, you need to subscribe so that we can uh, get into this discussion together. You also need to share this information with those that can benefit from it and you also need to ring that bell so that whenever a new video is out you will be notified otherwise for me it's goodbye for now <laughs>